and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, across this gorgeous, beautiful Kyber Empire. You better believe it. It's dang great to be in the Empire today, and you're an Arnold Hollownet News. The only news you'll ever need. <laughs> because you have no other choice. And it's finally happening. We called it. The love for Jedi Fallen Order is starting today, where we got two kit reveals. It's going to be a busy week here, so make sure you subscribe. You get ready for all the kit reveal testing. We have Calcastus today. Sir Junda, and later on this week, we're testing out Reva. So this Thursday, Calcast is gonna show up. Reva's here. I don't know what else to tell you guys. It's gonna be bang freaking busy, and I'm looking forward to it. A lot of stuff to go over. Basically, it's looking like Cal Kestis is going to be helping Sir Junda make a brand new unaligned forest team and get a load of this. They're telling us straight up that Sir Junda and Cal Kestis are crashing their game, which is a weird flex. Secondly, they're telling us not to put speed mods on the entire team. We're going to go all over all that. But speaking of mods, Pinfo, you're going to want to hit him up. Greatest modern galaxies, they'll help you remod your roster from top to frickin' bottom. And especially if weird stuff like this, there's gonna be some nooks and crannies you're gonna need some help with. And stay tuned, people and I, we're gonna have a really fun new Galaxy Vero series coming out on a little collab project. So hopefully you're going to enjoy it. Uh, another thing I wanna put out there, it looks like Cal Kestis might be great to be used as well with Star Killer. A lot of interesting stuff ahead of us. Let's go ahead, bring you on on over and show you what we got cooking today. We're actually live right now on the second channel, trying to play some Marvel Snap, and all of a sudden we were bombarded <laughs> with all these kit reveals here. So we might have some Marvel Snap people in the chat looking at all this Star Wars love here. So Cal Kestis, light side support, unaligned forest user. Two interesting things we got to point out. Uh, one, it's got an Omicron that's going to activate Ahsoka Tano's Omicron inside of Territories. And Ahsoka Tano, if you don't know, it's basically the Wamp of Territories. So pretty good stuff there. Uh, also, on top of that, we got a little hint at the gear requirements for the future Cal Kestis journey event. Remember, all this Cal Kestis stuff is building up to a journey event. And unfortunately, it's not like Commander Luke. It's not like the Revenant. It's not like Best Commander where it's low gear. It's not horrible. It's not Relic 5, but they are requiring seven star gear 12 minimum to even participate in it. A little sad, past the days of minimal unlocks, but gear 12 isn't really all that bad. Actually, it's kind of incentivizing me to keep my guys as close as possible to gear 12 so we can have something reasonably unlockable uh, for people that might not want to go to Relic 5. And then Marquee Event's going to be 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time per usual Thursday. It seems like Cal Kestis first, Sir Junda. You got to be second without any more delays. Let's go read this kit. And it's going to make a little bit more sense when we look at Sir Junda. So overhead slash. Uh, one thing I want to point out, it's going to, there's kind of like some Boba Fett sign of Jango mechanics where Boba Fett has, has momentum. Here, we're gonna have something a little different as we'll see. Overhead slash, deal physical damage to target enemy and inflict defense down, speed down for one turn. And while Kale's at certain health thresholds, so think of like Lord Vader, they gain additional effects depending on what health threshold they're at. Just like Lord Vader, while at or below 75% health, gain health steal up for one turn to help you get back up as fast as possible. Next up, at 60% health, or lower, you're gonna attack again and inflict critical chance down for one turn. But while at or below 40% health, attack a third time and a daze on a basic ain't all that bad. So when he gets a bit more desperate, the times are getting tough. He's gonna push through and work as hard as they possibly can. Remember, this is just the marquee version. This isn't the journey variant. We're starting off at the, I only can imagine what the Big Daddy Cal is gonna look like. Special one, help me, BD1. Cooldown of three. This spell all deals on target ally and they recover 45% health. That's good, but we're not quite done yet. The, keep this in mind. This healing is going to be important. We also look at Seer Junda later on. If the target ally is full health, they recover 30% protection instead. Moving on though, if the target ally is at full health and full protection, grant them critical hit immunity for two turns instead. Critical immunity is going to be good, but it's going to be a little odd. You think you'd want to make this ability go first, but you don't want to go first. You're going to want this team slow. If the target ally is a light side, they gain accuracy up for two turns. Now, my first initial impression was, uh, <laughs> I don't get this. Why? It's going to make a lot more sense when we get the Seer Juna. Don't worry. Be patient. We got a lot to go over here. Uh, so I like that in case you're already fully healed, you can now start healing at protection. We don't have a lot of protection healers inside of Galaxy of Heroes. Special two, not so fast. Cool down a three with a Zeta, inflict evasion down, speed down, tenacity down on all enemies for two turns, and all allies gain critical damage up and speed up for two turns. But get this, 
all unaligned forces or allies gain three percent turn for each debuff resisted by the enemy so you apply three debuffs five enemies potentially 15 debuffs that could be resisted if there was a tenacity up situation there and that means you have a potential 45 percent terminator defeat to your team if all things considered probably not going to happen all the time and if an enemy already had speed down they're stunned for one turn instead so potentially an aoe stun on this ability one thing that's very evident as we kind of already alluded to several times you're going to want to keep this team relatively slow there the developers are starting to fight back at high speed high turn meter tuscans tackling high turn meter this team kind of doing both high turn meter and high speed teams and they're going to rely mostly on them gaining turn meter instead of relying on high speed numbers it's going to make more sense when we get the sierra junda moving on unique number one i'm persistent zeta and omicron this is where things get really interesting at the start of the battle all unaligned forces or allies gain 30 percent max l 30 percent tenacity and whenever an ally is critically hit they and cal recover five percent health and protection as well so when someone's trying to cls you up or whatever you're gonna be healing uh ever so slightly if the allies also light set or dark set online forest user cal uh they and cal not just cal gain protection up 10 percent stacking which goes up to a maximum 50 percent for two turns and here's where everything starts to get really interesting for each specialty used by each other character which i believe counts enemy and friendly friendly folks on your side cal gains a stack of persistence which again it's gonna operate like momentum where the more persistence you have the more effects you're gonna get which can't be copied to spell to prevent it and if opponent takes the first turn in an encounter cal gains 15 stacks of persistence right away so this is why again you don't want to go first you want them to go first so think of han solo han shoots first boom cal gains 15 stacks of persistence but what does persistence do depending on how many stacks you get you're gonna get a little bit more 10 plus stacks he and all unaligned forces or allies gain foresight for two turns which is nice right but we got more 20 plus stacks he and all unaligned force users gain defense up and protection up 30 percent for two turns and on top of that 30 stacks this is where things get really wild he inflicts ability block and buff unit on all enemies for two turns which can't be evaded or resisted to screw your foresight screw your tenacity up ain't no problem for cal casts here and all allies gain 50 percent turn meter this effect is gonna be doubled for lights that online forces or allies so what's 50 times two 100 percent turn meter boom baby and then stacks of persistence are going to be reset and while in territories if there is an and it's we're getting really specific with omicrons man it's not just game mode specific it's game mode and character specific who also needs an omicron while uh in territories there's a ahsoka tano fulcrum with an upgraded omicron so three conditions right there to use this omicron ahsoka solo omicron effects are no longer disabled when she has allies this effect persists through defeat so you're gonna get basically womp up baked into this cal Cassis team inside of territory wars which sounds really darn fun big fan of ahsoka tano i love this year get more involved sucks it wasn't grand arena that activated ahsoka's omicron that would have gotten me really 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 excited so that's cal Cassis kit reveal it's gonna make a bit more sense when we transition over to Sir junda which they kindly in case you're like me they put the pronunciation it's not seri it's sear like a steak well, what if someone doesn't like steak i think you know you got to be cognizant of that i don't know we need a different example anyways let's not get into that basic keep fighting sear junda light side support scoundrel online force user and she's gonna be the leader let's preface this before we roll through the kit she's inventing a new team so cal cast this before seeing sir junior you're like hey it could work a star killer and i really do think it could possibly replace the unaligned force user visa smar and the star killer team kind of the weaker part of the team so yes but ultimately it looks like they're working towards an unaligned force user specific team both light and dark side keep that in mind so marin i suspect will be unaligned force user dark side we're expecting maybe malikos holy cow would that be amazing if they added Malikos? Oh, man. Let's read it, and you're going to understand why for Marquee, it's looking pretty good. Keep fighting basic. Deal physical damage to target enemy. All unaligned forces or allies gain tenacity up for two turns, and all allies gain accuracy up for two turns. So again, accuracy up. What's the point of it? Sit down, little Johnny. I'll get there in a moment. Force barrier. Cooldown of five. Again, I think you need to get you guys a little bit more hyped. 
they basically are saying this character has a Captain Rex aerial advantage, which everyone loves, but it breaks the game. <laughs> we'll get to that weird flex in a moment. Cooldown of five on Forest Barrier. All allies gain 10% bonus protect for two turns, gain an additional 5% bonus protection for each active Jedi ally, and get this, 10% bonus protection for each active dark side or light side on aligned forces or allies. It's not just light side for two turns. And then all unaligned forces or allies gain defense up for two turns. And the weakest dark side or other light side unaligned forces on team gains damage immunity for one turn. Do note, it's not like a Django damage immunity. It's like a Droidica damage immunity, which I presume can be dispelled, prevented, yada, 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 yada. But here we go. Now, don't be deterred by this cooldown of 10. I assure you, it's not gonna be nearly that high. So long as your team's slow, as we're gonna talk about. <laughs> Deal physical damage. The target enemy plus bonus damage equal to 10% of the target's max health, maximum of 200%. That's a lot of damage right there. For each turn an enemy has taken during this encounter. So this is one of many reasons why you just want to sit back and relax. Cal, he gets extra stacks for systems while you're just waiting for enemies taking their turn. Secondly, the more turns the enemy take, the more damage it's going to do, and the quicker her cooldowns are going to get reset. So 200% max health. That's almost like an aerial advantage, but used a bit more frequently than Captain Rex. This buddy starts on cooldown and can't be evaded. Unlike Captain Rex, aerial advantage can be evaded. All unaligned force user allies gain defense penetration up for two turns, for three turns. And then the weakest other lights that unaligned force user ally recovers 50% health. After you do massive damage, boom! Get this crap out of here, Gary! No, I don't care! Jeez, you have to ask me to update right now? No! Jeez, he sees, he sees I'm reading a kit reveal, kind of high level stuff right now. Anyways, the weakest other lights and other, I mean, just the fact that you're popping up an aerial advantage and casually healing up an ally is kind of a big deal. But we gotta get to this unique ability and the leader ability for the full picture to truly come to fruition. Unity through adversity, unique one and the only one. At the start of the battle, Seer gains 20% tenacity for each dark side unaligned forces ally, 20% max protection for each other light side unaligned forces ally, and then 20% defense for each Jedi ally. That's kind of a big net to throw out there, giving you flexibility depending on how your team is being built. If all allies, how we doing? Kylo, yeah, I know, he just needs a little bit of love right now. If all allies are dark side or light side unaligned forces allies and or no galactic legends, mind you, at the start of the battle, and I guess that's on both sides. Uh, no, just no, just Galactic Legend allies. Cool. So there could be a Galactic Legend enemy. You're good. Okay. It's not like Qui Gon Omicron. At the end of each of his, uh, her turns, here it is. Seer's cooldowns are increased by one. So you don't want her to be fast. That's the first where if you're taking a lot of turns, she's going to wrap up her cooldowns. Whenever an enemy takes a turn, her cooldowns are decreased by one. All cooldowns, not just the aerial advantage ability. So Forest Barrier, constantly resetting the cooldowns. That's gonna probably happen all the time. Uh, we also have the Determined Assault, cooldown of 10. That's gonna go down pretty darn quickly. So again, it's reminding us, make your character slow because if she's taking too many turns, she's increasing her cooldowns and she's not reducing her cooldowns enough. But we're not done yet. We gotta get to this leader ability. And if Territory Omicrons don't make you excited of Cal Kestis, if the Territory Battle Omicrons of the Cal Kestis Survivor don't make you excited, we have a Grand Arena Omicron on Seer Junda. And wow, is it doing a lot. Rekindle Zeta Omicron. All allies have 20% defense, max health, max protection, more if you're inside a Grand Arena. And there are uh, double for unaligned force user allies. So 40% and there's even more as we'll get to. At the start of each encounter, all oh, unaligned force user allies and Jedi allies gain protection of 50% and tenacity up for two turns. Beautiful, great way of starting a battle. 50% protection is gonna be helpful, especially in territories when you're just getting like stomped. It's a nice layer of defense, especially when the whole goal of this team is to sit back, survive, let the enemy take turns, and then we start making momentum happen. That's that's why that protection up is in place and tenacity up so you actually don't get stunned, ability block, and garbage like that. Tenacity up to think of Genite Revan. Genite Revan tenacity up turn one's kind of nuts. If all allies are dark side or light side online force your allies and or no galactic legend allies at the start of the battle, here it is. Until an ally takes their first turn, whenever an enemy starts their turn, all unaligned forces your allies gain 5% critical chance, critical damage, and offense stacking. There's no reset on this. It just keeps going up until the end of the battle. 
And then while allies have accuracy up, finally we're getting around to it. 50% critical damage. So Sir Juna grants accuracy up. Cal Castus grants accuracy up. 50% critical damage on top of already stacking offense and critical damage. Some pretty nutty damage you're going to be throwing out out there. Holy cow. That's a lot. But we're not done yet. All other unaligned forces or allies gain 5% turn meter whenever another unaligned forces or ally takes damage from an enemy. So this right here is where you're going to rely on getting turns. Because here's the thing. You, you need to take turns or else Imperial Troopers just run over you. But at least here, you're letting Imperial Troopers take all their turns. But you are going to get turn meter well. So you're not just sitting there being pummeled into the ground. So although we're relying on slow speeds, turn meter gains of Calcasts and here is what we need to have. But we're not a done just yet, my senores. In Grand Arenas, all Grand Arenas, not three, three, not five, all Grand Arenas. Cool, you got me there, great. If all allies are dark side or light side online, force your allies and there are no Galactic Legend allies, all right. All allies gain 30% max health and max protection more than before and are immune to ability block in days. Holy cow, so you can't stop that turn meter gain uh, that they're getting and you can't ability block preventing Sarah Juna from doing her big ability. At the start of each encounter, all unaligned force users and Jedi allies gain a bonus of 75% protection up instead. And for each instant of damage any unaligned force user deals to an enemy, they gain 10% offense, which is stacking for two turns. So even more offense on this team. And we're not done yet until an ally takes their first turn. Whenever an enemy starts their turn, all online force their allies gain an additional 10% to the previous 5% we talked about. Ten, uh, critical chance, critical damage, and offense stacking until the end of the battle. I, I, I don't know how to emphasize that, but like, let's say you just take four hits. Boom, you're getting turn meter. You're already at 60% additional critical damage in offense. On paper, that sounds banger. When an ally dispels a debuff, so Cal Kestis has a cleanse, for example, they recover 50% of amp protection and gain advantage for two turns. And finally, whenever an ally dispels a buff, they recover 15% health and protection. And at the end of their turn, they gain foresight for two turns. Holy cow. That's a lot, a lot to take in. Point being, let's just summarize, new unaligned force user team that's coming to Galaxy of Heroes. Dark side and light side combined. Ahsoka Tano's gonna be relevant, even more so relevant in a team, not just in a solo capacity. Territory War Omicron for Cal Kestis, Grandarin Omicron for Sierra Junda. Make your team as slow as possible, no speed mods, but take them to the finish line. And I gotta find the most interesting flex of all time here. Uh, so they were talking about her ability, kind of like Captain Rex's aerial advantage. It can stack much, much quicker than his does. And when combined with the right team setup, she can use this ability multiple times better. Because again, as long as the enemy's taking turns, you're resetting cooldowns. Captain Rex has to wait a little bit. And this is where the flex comes in. During testing, <laughs> these values reach such high values that it would frequently crash the game. Weird flex, CG, but okay. So uh, this team, these requirements for Calcast Survivor are already looking really good. Makes you really wonder. I know we were kind of speculating and hoping Malakos has come to the game. I'm feeling pretty confident. If they're making a dark side, light side, online force user team combined, Malakos sounds more likely than Greece at this point. Oh man, and it's like a steak, right? The chat's saying it's like a steak. <laughs> this team's gonna be sizzling like a steak. That's for sure. But we're going to wrap it up there. Let me know your thoughts down below. Holy cow, man. Um, really looking forward to this team. So remember, Thursday, I don't even know how we're going to do. We might have to do two-day testing. One day for Cal Kestis, one day for Reva on the following day. Because CG, you don't let me play your game. You can't be in squad arena. Let me play your game as long as I want. Please. We're in 2023. Wake up, smell the coffee. Players want to play your game. Stop kicking me out. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see how we're going to divvy up our time. Nonetheless, a lot of stuff going on this week. And more importantly, I, I always love to say how it's great to be in the Empire Ooh, today. I'll see you guys later this week.